What's going on boys? No guides here. Welcome back to another video. This is a question I get asked awfully a lot. Um, how do you well, how do you know when your players are doing nothing, when they're not making movements, when they're just standing still? And why do my players do nothing in the attack? And I always get this people say, Oh yeah, this guy's got this team, he's better than me, or his team is more powerful than me. And that's the reason why. Well, it isn't quite the same. Um, I've got my live controller so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, the first thing is dictating a game. Um, a lot of people think their players do nothing because they don't understand what they're actually doing. Now, um, contrary to belief, um, compared, well, this is my opinion, most people don't understand how to play this game properly. Um, a lot of the basics go completely out the window, and um, there's nothing wrong with what people are doing. But, for example, there's too many times people don't know how to play the game properly, and what they'll do, for example, they'll watch a video on how to get better, but they'll learn like an abusive mechanic, like the bridge or the direction that make. I wouldn't know the basics, for example, like triggering a play to make a run going forward, you know, using hug the sideline, spreading the play, making the pitch wider to create a situation. This is the problem. Because they don't know about these things, when they get into the final third and if they can't go through, they only rely on one thing, like a direct shot number to get through. Now, if you're that person, for example, oh, let me get this goal here. So like, even like there, most people there will do a ball roll. Now, even though the pros do it, I think it's completely incorrect to do a ball roll there. Because if you do a ball roll in that 1v1 situation, you actually move the ball away from the goalkeeper. But you also create a more difficult angle for you. See, if you did a ball roll, the ball will be towards me. And the goalkeeper will recover there. That's why a lot of people actually mess up that situation. But that's what I mean. A lot of people don't understand the differences of understanding the game. Now, the first thing I'd say is lag and delay. Lag and delay is definitely a thing in the game, I'm not going to lie. Um, I am also a sufferer of it, I have dedicated lease line internet and even then I still have lag. Um, so everyone's in the same boat. Um, yes, you can argue some, I know for example like in, um, in South America, I know it's a bit of a different situation. A bit too late but I kind of got away with it. But lag is definitely a big, big thing. The best thing I'd say is, you know, it's hard to avoid it. Try to play not at a, at a, a key main time. Um, that's kind of my best advice on that, trying to play around 6pm. Um, the third thing which is the most important is L1 triggers. Um, there's multiple players you can make runs, or make players make runs going forward. Now you can see I've got a very attacking team, I've got three players on stay forward. Look on the radar, look on my radar, look on my attackers, they're all on stay forward, right? Now all these attackers are on stay forward, so that means they're not going to be making runs themselves, because they're already on stay forward. Does that make sense? Look on the radar, you see those three strikers? If I get the ball back, they're not going to be making runs in behind unless they have an instruction to get in behind. Select here. So you got to make them run. How? You do one, twos, L1 triggers. Send these guys forward. Send everyone forward around you. Obviously, don't send your back, your CDM or back four forward. But L1 triggers. Too many players, they get the ball like this with, with a strike and they walk around like this. They're like, oh, i got no one to pass to. There's no movement. Oh, there's Ronaldo. Okay, that's it. Oh, yeah, look, no one's with me. I got no movement. But they don't do these one twos. They don't send Ronaldo going forward. They don't bring the ball to Eto. They don't pass the ball to Vasquez. Send Eto going forward. Send Neymar going forward. Create that space, create that pass, and then create the angle. But the problem is, no one is doing it. Everyone thinks they're doing it, but they're not. And that is the biggest issue with FIFA because a lot of people are relying, for example, and in my opinion, this is why I don't, you know what, if you ever came to my channel and ever wondered, why doesn't Neil teach, for example, the most broken mechanic in the game? Why does he only teach bottom line, basic FIFA, why does he not teach, for example, the bridge or direction nutmeg? Because I don't want you to sit here and learn it and then you get screwed because what happens is the endless cycle. What happens is this year, for example, let's say, I don't know, you're a gold one, that was well played. Um, let's say, for example, this year, a gold one player, and let's say you make it to Elite 3. My plan is when FIFA 22 comes out, you should be in the gold one, maybe the, of gold two the first month, then after that you go straight to elite. But the problem is, if you just rely on it, like let's say you go on an abusive mechanic, you rely on getting the ball here, you spam a bridge skill move, and you're hoping to get through, not by skill, but you're hoping to get through by luck, it's not the same. So that's my aim. My aim is to make someone a better player by playing the game properly. That doesn't mean, that's why I don't tell you to drop back one depth, part of the bus, because I don't play that way. And I don't, for example, some extremes, I don't shoot outside the box. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but I, that's just the way that I play, just to show you a key, effective way of playing. Um, the second thing is tactics. So definitely tactics influence. As you can see, I got a long ball on. So if you look at my players, you give, if I get the ball to my CDM over here, yes, my players are somewhat decent, but players are making runs in behind because of attack positioning. Um, I have the long ball um, D pad, uh, not D pad tactic, the long ball um, tactic on my dynamic tactic. So players move about a bit more. Um, think about long ball is getting behind. Um, for example, like there, see how Vasquez gets in behind? Um, if you've got a, a balanced centre mid or any of those players, get in behind is a really good option. Um, but not every single player, for example, if you try to use it, if you have like a cam, I mean, you've played a 4 2 3 1, you ever realize in the instructions, the left attacking mid, the right attacking mid, they don't have getting behind on them. Um, that's why a long ball is a good supplement. So a long ball is really good, especially if you're building up. So what I find is when you're building up, so not in these situations, but let's say when you're building up, when you win the ball back, 
Long ball is really, really, really effective. Let me just shoot here just to give him the ball back. Oh, my God. That actually almost went in. That is shocking. Eto is a terrible player, but let's try that again. Okay, that's kind of say. Eto not the best players. But long ball is really good. So when you win the ball back, long ball is really good for build-up play. So when you, for example, when you get the ball over here. So let's say for example, like here, you get the ball. Now watch my play. See how they start making runs going forward? Um, and see that Crespo as well? And this is very, very effective for build-up play. Now, obviously, the formation is important. This is why I use, for example, the 3-5-2. 3-5-2 is very, very important. You've got loads of attacking players and abundance of attacking players, may I add. And that is why I've stayed with it. I've not, after the first two weeks, I said, you know, 4 2 one is a good formation. But I've gone more towards the 3-5-2. I'll be going to the new 4-2-3-1, by the way. My new, uh, the 4 2 3 one with two strikers. If you guys know about that, you would know. Um, but I'm going towards that, but I still prefer... Um, the 3-5-2 anyway in that regard. Um, the next thing I want to say is the way people play. Now, this guy is playing very defensive, um, almost a park the bus system. Let's just have a look at the radar for a second. So he's got two strikers on stay forward. He's got a back line of five. Now, the benefit of my 3-5-2 is, um, thankfully he's not coming towards me, so it's perfect to explain this to you, is that his players are matching my players. I've got five strikers. He's got five defenders. And that means when I bring the ball back to my center mid, he has to bring out one of his center mids to defend against me. You see that? And that is why you use your centre back, your centre mids. So use these kind of like your centre mids and your CDMs as pivot players. Bang the ball around. Because look, he has to move it. And it's it. When he moves his back three out of position, look, then you have space in behind. Like, see, as they're not making that run, I should use an L1 trigger there. I'm going to go for like a bit of a spec. I'm actually, I actually don't shoot from this far, but let me just go for a bit of a spectacular, to be honest. I've not done like free kick. Okay, I messed that up. Oh well. I'm playing this on the PS5 version as well, just so you can see the animations. I prefer the PS4 version still. Um, but I'm just playing this on the PS5 version just to give you a bit of an insight. Um, but some is the, way, is the way people play now. Um, this is important because if someone's using team press, people get choked inside the box. Um, like for example, like here, let's say I lose the ball, right? I think it's using pressionary touch. The key thing is, look, play slowly yourself. Okay, look, I understand I'm getting pressed. I'll show this again in the second half. But if you're getting team pressed, you have to have a system to counteract it. A lot of people, when they're very frustrated, they rush to play. Now, you can sit here and say to me the game's against you. If you believe in fairies, then you might as well click to the right-hand side and go click on someone screaming opening packs because that's probably the content you want to watch. You actually want to get better, but you all know the truth is that tactics influence the way you play, no matter what. Um, for the top-tier players of everything on balance, is fine. They're pro players. They know what they're doing. In fact, when I'm tryharding, I have mine on possession and balance because I trigger everything manually. But for the vast majority of players, they need to use long ball. They need to use uh, even balance. Just use it. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, if someone's using team press, you're going to feel rushed. And what I mean by that is you're going to feel choked in. The problem is when people are losing one or two nil, is they feel like, oh, I need to get the ball going forward. And they're trying to run like, they tried to run like this with Eto'o. They tried to run like this past the entire team. They get past the first guy, get past the guy. Like, oh, this is working. This is working. And he wants to go to the final four, they get done. You cannot run past your opponent. If you want to build up play, just do a one, two. An L1 plus the X button, an LB plus A is all you need to do. Now, the best thing is to do a one, two backwards, not forwards. Now, contrary to belief, it doesn't matter what anyone else is telling you. A 1-2 backwards is the best way to go forward. Why? I'll explain to you. Look, if I get the ball over here, now be careful you do a 1-2. You don't want to do a 1-2 backwards to your centre back because otherwise the player has the ball. Run. It's like, let's say here's my centre back. If I do a 1-2, then Cadrado now has run forward. Now look, look at Cadrado. He's, he's going to keep, like, if I lose the ball here now, it's done. Look, Cadrado run back on side again. But look, see, look, now I've got no central centre back. Now I've got my CDM covering for me. And that is why you have to understand it's important to do. Let's look at Cadrado running back now. So you've got to be very wary who you're doing a 1-2 with. So do a 1-2 with an attacking player. So like here's my left mid. So I do a ball roll. I do a 1-2 back. See that I create that triangle? De La Feu is making a run here. Do a 1-2 again. That's there. De La Feu is making a run in behind. Then I do a through ball. Do you see how easy it is to pierce through a defense by doing that? Like let's say in contrast, for example, if I go the opposite way and I just do regular passes. Let's just switch the ball over here. Let's say regular pass, which most people do like this here. Okay, that's different. Vasquez ran because I was on long ball. That was a bit different. But you'd be like here, blowing up like this. And my players are gone and getting behind. I'll show you that in a second. But the reason why these players are making runs going forward, or barely any runs, because they've got the instruction. Now, this is important. This is why instruction. Let me pause the game so I can just show you. Let me just quickly get this. Try to get this goal. Okay. Let me. Okay. Never mind. I'm um, already kicked off. Um, but you can see when, when people are rushing. That's the same thing with running out with your center backs like that. You run out with your center back like that. You're going to create a massive, massive gap. Someone's going to go through. And it could be completely GG. Um, but anyway, let's just go. So let me show you an example. So in my players, I have instructions. I'm um, getting behind. 
Um, these are very, very important. These influence gameplay as well. Um, if you if you want, um, I'd recommend putting all your players together behind par one striker. Problem is, in delay, sometimes two strikers or get it behind is a bit problematic. Um, so do bear that in mind. And for the cams that don't have getting behind, I just put a long ball on them. And that is why tactics does influence. So I recommend every single player, even if you're... In fact, if you're even an elite three player, I'd still say put long ball on. Um, I still use long ball. Um, just because I'm pretty much lazy um, when it comes to attack. I want to just chill and I, I don't play the game seriously. I think most of it that, that watch this, my videos, you want to get better at the game. You want to reach a lead, but you don't want to park the bus by doing that. Otherwise, you'll be watching some of mechanic and beauty tutorials. That makes sense. But that's what I say in terms of the way, don't rush. A lot of people, they rush, you know, um, I, I like to, even if, even I know, for example, if you're 1-0 down, 2-0 down, don't rush. Like, see like this guy as well, right? He's got one goal back in the game. So you see, I don't want him to get confidence. Now, this is what people think DDA exists. Um, if you want my honest, candid opinion, no BS, um, whether you like me or not, you can hate me. I don't care. You can dislike the video. Scripting doesn't exist, not, nor does DDA. Um, when I'm when I'm losing 4-0, the game's not doing me any favours. Um, once you become a high level player, you'll understand that. Um, the game is BS. There's ba yes, I've seen you know bad delays and bad um, bad rebounds. Yes, but it happens randomly. It's RNG. Um, happens when you're winning, but you don't realize it because you're winning half the time. If you actually watch your game back, you don't believe me, go watch your game back and watch how many times you got so lucky when you when you actually scored a goal. In fact, if people say, oh, if I never had DDA against me, I would have scored so many more goals. But the truth is, they wouldn't have even scored half the goals they would have scored if it wasn't for DDA or so should I say the game being BS but that's the whole thing with behind DDA and BS I don't care what this this patent is I don't think he's bringing up this stupid patent I think even a, a junior um, a paralegal any even a first year law student can defend that ambiguous um, um, defend that ambiguous uh, let me just say hang on let me just uh, defend this yeah defend that that pattern is a basic uh, a brief pattern had nothing to do with online gameplay and it meant absolutely nothing but of course when a big youtuber makes it the whole community goes in outrage everyone follows in suit and that's what basically happened but of course we're here to tell the truth and here not to lie so dda is not going to help you looks like here one two back hey look not too sure where to go one two back one two back we build up the play bring my left mid left back into play now we create an overlap now we can see our cdm is now free we do an l1 trigger seven are they going forward here we do it again. And then when you go into the game, think think of my head voice head. One, two, see Neymar's now free. Now Neymar's free. I'm just going to do a little bit of a trickery here. Um, do fix around the goalkeeper. Oh, not the best of angles to be fair. A bit of tight one here. I don't think we can get out of this, can we? Good, good defending in the end. Maybe a bit too much of mine. But, you know, the key thing is, as I said, is you build up progressively. You build up slowly. Please do not rush. I know it's hard. I know when you're losing... Um, people have the element of rushing. This is why I say when you lose a game, you take a break. I'm not saying take an hour break. I'm not saying go downstairs for an hour, go watch some TV. I'm saying literally go downstairs, maybe go make a cup of tea, take five minutes away from the game. Do something. Do something else because what you don't realize is even scientifically speaking, if you're concentrating on something and you're frustrated, if you don't give yourself a mental break, you don't play as well. I want to go back to the first week example, right? Um, I knew the game... When everyone else is saying, oh, this game is amazing, I knew the game was done in the first week, how bad it was. Um, because, um, obviously, me and a couple of other people don't understand how the game mechanics are, what should be in the game, what shouldn't be. I knew the game was done in the first week, and I was so frustrated in my first foot champs. I was 10-0, for example. My, I, I, give it, I keep giving my example, I was 10-0. And, um, and in the first foot champs, generally speaking, I expect to win 99% of my games, or 95. Maybe you get a bit unlucky with a BS, um, just simply because of... The, the, my level naturally without going into any FIFA, without learning the mechanics, just by playing basic FIFA, I know my level. But the problem is, so like here, like, so like here as well, there's not enough players next to me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to choose here, I'm going to choose attacker like Neymar. And see, now I've got more players defensively, and that way I've got more players to build up with. See how easy it is now? Then I can use that strike. Let's see, like now I'm getting pressed, but I can build up slowly out the back. See, Neymar's there. Neymar's occupying that player. Good, the good, good press though. And you see, like here, I'm getting pressed. It's gonna be patient. I'm not gonna panic. Be patient. Let's stick touch away. If I'm ever in trouble, remember the goalkeeper's there. If I'm ever in trouble, the goalkeeper's there. Not gonna panic. Literally not gonna panic. Opposite side, someone's open up. See, I'm left hand on stick, taking the, the ball away from the opponent. I'm just keeping the ball safe here. You see that? Keeping the ball safe. It's just safe. That's it. Take a touch away. Bit a bit of unlucky there. Eto's a bit clunky to be honest. That happens on his Eto, but that's a good tackle. Pass going forward, take a touch away. 
like that into a through ball. Take a touch away. That was good. That was a good tackle though, to be honest. I should have done a I should actually a touch away there. I tried doing a fake shot stop there, and that should not have been a foul. Um, but anyway, you kind of get the point I'm trying to say. So I go back to the first weekend league. I lost three games in a row, and I had to clutch all of it in the end to get 27. So you have to understand that um, it doesn't matter how good you think you are, even if you're up against. I was losing against opponents that maybe like, you know, you know, I'm saying gold three level with all due respect. Um, and you shouldn't be losing against these guys, but especially like not in the first week, because people don't know what you know what mechanics are what in the game. That scares. That scares. Oh, too much. I haven't got agile dribbling on, by the way. This is just purely Leicester dribbling. Ah, oh, too much. Too much there. Um, but anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe an informative one. Maybe kind of a, a question and answer. Not question and answer, but like just a, someone wrote this comment down. And I thought I would answer it anywhere in the comment section, but. Uh, Hope you enjoyed this video. Main things to take away is long ball, L1 triggers, 1-2. Um, don't worry about creative runs for now. If you're part of my Patreon series, by the way, we're going to go over creative runs uh, this month if you're part. So if you're not part of my Patreon series, patreon.com forward slash nil guys. Link is down below in the description as well. Um, but we'll go over creative runs. Um, but that's more on the advanced level. But, you know, keep things simple. 1-2s, L1 triggers. It's all you need to know. Thanks for watching, boys. Take it easy. Have a wonderful weekend. Peace out.